Okay, so this is graphing linear equations. I'm going to go ahead and talk about what we're going to do for a couple of days. I'm just going to do um, the horizontal line, vertical line, slope intercept form, and finding the x and y intercepts when it's in standard form. So we're just going to do a couple of these in each section. All right, so y equals means that it's crossing the y-axis, so that means this is a horizontal line. And the horizontal line has a slope that is zero. So to graph the horizontal line, you're going to go to the x or to the y-axis, and I didn't draw my graph long enough, so let me extend this. So we're going to count down to negative three, because if it's y equals negative three, then it's crossing the y-axis at negative three. So one, two, here's negative three. And then I'm just going to sketch a line that is horizontal through the y-axis. And that's all you need to do to graph a horizontal line when it says y equals. To graph x equals 4, that means it's crossing the x-axis, so that is a vertical line. And a vertical line, you know, has a slope that's undefined. And so to graph a vertical line, you're going to go to the x-axis. You're going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, because it's x equals 4, and draw your vertical line. And there's the graph. So that's pretty much all you do for when it's just y equals a number and just x equals a number. It's a, either a horizontal line or a vertical line. Right, the next thing we're going to look at is graphing a line when it's in slope-intercept form. We're going to start by graphing number two. We'll do a couple of these. So y equals negative two-thirds times x plus four. This is in slope-intercept form. So you need to pick out your slope, so that's the number in front of x. You could have negative 2 divided by 3, or you could have 2 over negative 3. The negative can be with the numerator or the denominator. And then your y-intercept is the number at the end, and that's 4. So y-intercept is a point, so that's a starting point. Slope is just a movement. So I'm going to go to the y-axis, and I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, and put a dot. And now slope is a movement. And notice that I it's going to be really hard for me to go up with the part of the graph that I have, so I am going to use negative 2 over 3. So this is your rise over run, so you're going to go down 2, because that's a negative movement, and then the 3 is positive, so you're going to go to the right 1, 2, 3. You can do that again. From this point, you can go down 2 and then right 1, 2, 3. Now, if you had more graph and you couldn't go this, you know, you couldn't keep going from left to right, you could go backwards. And that's where you would use the positive 2 over the negative 3. So you could go up 2, but then left 1, 2, 3 for the negative movement. As you can see, that point is still on the graph of the line. And then you're going to connect your dots, put your arrows on the end, and there's your line. Sometimes you have to rewrite your equation. So let's look at number 8. Or let's look at, yeah, we'll look at number 8, and I'll, then I'll do another one. So number 8 is kind of odd looking, so since we're trying to get it into y equals mx plus b, I think it might be helpful if you just switch sides so that your y is on the left and x is on the right, and then you're going to divide both sides by 6, and then you'll have y equals, and 3 over 6 reduces to 1 half times x. You still have to pick out your slope and y-intercept, your slope, of course, is the number in front of x. And then your y-intercept is the number that's added on at the end. Well, we, do, we don't see a plus 2 or a minus 3, so if there's not a number there, the number is 0. And then our starting point is 0, so that's at the origin. And then our movement is 1 half, so that means rise over run, so... We're going to rise 1, and then we're going to run to the right 2. So up 1, right 2. Now, you could go down and left, because you could have a negative 1 over negative 2, which is still positive 1 half. So you could go down 1 and then left 2. Notice how that is still on the line. 
I always recommend trying to get at least three to four points to have a good straight line. All right, let's look at number 10. All right, number 10 is not in slope intercept form. It's got a little bit more work to it. This is what we were doing the other day. Remember our goal is to get it into mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. So you have a negative 3x plus 2y equals 4. The first thing you should do is to move that 3x to the other side. So it's, a net, it's minus 3x, so we're going to add 3x to both sides. Those add out. We're going to drop down my, the 2 times y. And then remember, we're going to write it kind of backwards because we want it to be mx plus b. So that would be 3x, and that's a positive 4. And so you have 2 times y equals 3x plus 4. So now you're going to divide everything by 2. That cancels, and you're going to have y equals 3 halves times x, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, in a minute, we're not going to change these into slope-intercept form, and we're going to see why we wouldn't do that. Right now, we have, we ended up with a fraction. That's because that negative 3 is not divisible by that 2. So anyway, our slope is 3 halves, and the y-intercept is 2. So I'm going to go to my graph. I'm going to go up to 2 on the y-axis and put a dot. That's my starting point. And then from there, I'm going to go rise over run, 3 over 2. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and then right 1, 2. Since I don't have a graph that I can keep going, but I would like to have another point, I could go down 1, 2, 3, and then left 1, 2. And then there's my line. So just a quick overview of what we did in class. All right, the last thing we're going to graph is when it is in standard form, but it's perfect. It's a good situation. I'm only going to do one of these because it takes up a lot of space and a lot of time. And this is just a quick overview if you need um, just, you know, a little bit of extra help with graphing a line. This time we're going to find the x and y intercept. That means a point where the graph crosses the x and y axis. And to do that, you just simply have to find two points. And it's not that hard. I'm going to show you how you do it, and then in class I'll show you like a little um, quick method. But the algebra behind it is if you want to find the x-intercept first, Zoom out just a little bit so I can keep my graph to use in just a minute. All right, so find the x-intercept. We're going to let y be 0 because if it's on the x-axis, all those points have a y of 0. So that means I'm going to take my negative 2 times x plus 5y equals negative 10, and I'm going to let y be 0. So negative 2 times x plus 5 times 0 equals negative 10. And then 5 times 0, that's gone. So negative 2x equals negative 10. And so when you have negative 2 times x equals negative 10, to solve, you're going to divide by negative 2. And you have x is equal to negative 5. And that is going to be your x-intercept. So negative 5 comma 0. And I did not draw my graph right on this one either, so I was trying to just have these already drawn to make it easier. So I'm going to extend this a little bit. It's not a big deal. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's negative 5, so I'm going to put a dot on negative 5. So that's my x-intercept. To find my y-intercept, you will let x equal 0 because every point on the y-axis has a x-coordinate of 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. So you can find the y-intercept by letting x be 0. So I'm going to write my equation down again. And this time where I have an x, I'm going to put a 0. So I have negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times y equals negative 10. And negative 2 times 0, that goes away. And then you're going to drop down your 5 times y equals negative 10. And to solve for y, you would divide by 5. And then you get y is equal to negative 2. So that's your y-intercept. You let x be 0, 
and then your y-intercept is negative 2. So I'm going to go to the y-axis and go down to negative 2 and put a dot, and then I can connect the two points to have the equation of my line. Now, I know that seems like a lot of work, but I'll go ahead and show you the shortcut once you understand how you find the x and y-intercept. So let's look at number 2. When I'm looking at this equation, I'm thinking, okay, I could rewrite it in slope-intercept form, although the directions say use the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The first thing I should notice is that 3 and negative 2 divide evenly into negative 12, so the x-intercept and the y-intercept are actually the easiest way to get to those points. If I want the x-intercept, then I'm going to get rid of the y. I'm going to let it be 0, and 3 times 0 would disappear. And now you can see you have negative 2 times x, equals negative 12. And then if you divide both sides by negative 2, you find that x is equal to 6. So that's your x-intercept. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you want to find your y-intercept, you're going to let x be 0. So negative 2 times 0, that would make that term disappear. And then you'd just be left with 3 times y equals negative 12. And when you solve for y, you'll find that y is equal to negative 4, so that is your y-intercept. So you would go down 1, 2, 3 to negative 4, and then you connect your dots, and you would have your line. So that's kind of like not having to write all the work out if you understand how you're finding the x and y-intercept. So just a quick couple examples of the different ways that you can graph a linear function.